Malaysia, where no gays or durians are allowed indoors. <laughs> okay, they don't care too much about the gay thing, just don't bring a durian indoors. <laughs> Yes, it is me, Damon D, and it is my duty to see, smell, and taste a durian. Let's go get one. Durian's over here. Mm -hmm. huh. Finished. It's one. Finished. Oh, come on over here. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. I get a okay. I don't think he's ready for me yet. Can I get one? Huh? Can I buy one? You buy one? Ooh. I don't know how to eat this. First time. First time try? First, First time oh. try. Do you like the smell of this? Yeah, it's good. I like it. You love the smell of durian? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Ow! First time. <laughs> so for real, if you look at any buildings, they'll have a sign that's like, literally like no firearms and no durians. No durians allowed. No. <laughs> it's a real thing. Like when you're entering immigration to different countries, they'll be like, do not have, do not come in here with a durian. And it's because they be stinking. Oh, it looks like a fetus. Bye-bye. Bye. See you next time okay, at the bye. durian stand. It kind of tastes like peach. It kind of tastes like B.O. This texture is like yogurt. Oh, my God. Lady Gaga flashbacks. My new favorite food. People are getting multiple durians. It's not just like, this is like the personal pan durian size. <sighs> this aftertaste though. All right, everyone, what that just tasted like, it was like if you rolled my suitcase into the men's locker room, then sprayed it with peach Febreze, and then ate it. <laughs> well, that's me. I just had my first durian. <laughs> you guys, if there's one thing I majored in, it's finding the queer rave in the city. And I'm super excited for this one because it's one of these like, sorry, you can't share the location, no social media, no cameras. Because <laughs> I think it's technically legal. Dude, I don't know anybody, but that's how, I mean, did y'all think I knew somebody here? That's me. I think this is me. For Damon? What? Okay, yes, nice to meet you. Good luck. Chandler and Monica. Someone asked him, like, which would you rather give up, food or sex? And Monica, before hesitating, says, sex! <laughs> because she's with Chandler. Sorry, honey, no, when she said sex, I wasn't thinking about sex with you. <laughs> <laughs> because she's with Chandler. <laughs> Hi, guys. I didn't know that I was the mayor of Kuala Lumpur. That's all I gotta say. So I went out last night. Um. So did all of you. Oh my god, it was so much fun. Not only did I meet you guys, but then I ran into people from WeWork. <laughs> I was like, sorry, do you go to WeWork? <laughs> and then I hung out with the guy all night. We like even shared shots. I think these were the first shots I did in three years. I had nine shots. <laughs> this is what I texted him this morning. <laughs> oh, wait, the whole reason I ordered from this place is because the girl from the W recommended that I go to the Hungry Tapir. Now for those new here, let me just explain why I like to go to raves like that. Okay, look up the 
Matrix Rave Scene. And then like turn the lights down even more. Yeah. I like it because it feels like a secret society or like the underground rebellion. That's what it feels like. Because, I mean, essentially it is the underground rebellion because you're rebelling against societal rules. It's also nice to be in a place where people aren't there to like show off, you know? Like it's not about what you look like. It's not about the cute picture you get. Like sometimes I'll get emotional in the club. <laughs> I was looking around the club last night like, wow, this is our generation. Like I'm not alive in the 1920s. I'm alive in the 2020s. These are my people. Yes, look around. These are your people. This is the time we're alive, baby. These, these are the options you got. <laughs> you ever think about that? Yeah, I just had so much to do today. No, I, I have all these friends, you know, oh. that I gotta... <laughs> I have so many friends. So oh, hell. Right, this is Alina, and I met her at the WeWork here in Kuala Lumpur. Oh my god, hey. <laughs> Wait, something so, I love that you guys say, mm -hmm. if I say, hey, can I get a flat white? Yeah. You guys will say, hot one, is it? Yeah. <laughs> or hot one, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you'll say, can. <laughs> can, can, can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were talking to the barista, and yeah. then you said something like, is it? Is it? Oh, you yeah, said, yeah, is yeah. it? I don't is know. It? It's more like, are you sure? Like, is it? Sure? Yeah. yeah, no, I love it. Yeah. Has been one of the oldest markets, so they sell a lot of like, I would say, not original stuff here. What is your What is your opinion on durians? For or against? I'm against, unfortunately. I'm not true Malaysian, but but I love durian ice cream. What's interesting yeah. is that I feel like, even though we are in. An Asian country where you guys speak Malay. Yeah. I feel like a lot of times people communicate in English still. Yes, most of the time actually. Um, I would say we speak in Manglish. Yeah. Did you say in Manglish? Manglish, so it's a bit of like a mix of Malay and English. Oh. Yeah. All right, follow me. Yeah. I told you. I'm gonna announce my presidency for Malaysia. Oh, what's your name? Mia. Mia. I love this city. Really? This is my city too. Yay. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, bye bye. Oh. No, I like it though. Yeah. I... You need those. It's one for 25, two for 40. You sure you just want one? Do you want one? Oh, no, that's fine. Get them. Bye. I'm getting them for you. <laughs> I'm literally buying those for oh you. My God. That's the least I could do. Oh my, are you kidding me? I gotta buy you something else. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Let's all go good. to the outlet mall. <laughs> Let's go. Oh. There's a lot happening here. <laughs> Batik everywhere. So I asked her, what is batik? You said your mom used to bring you here to get the material? Yeah, I get materials and we will get like some clothes to wear for like, you know, casual. You can wear it at home. You can wear it to a wedding or you can wear it to any kind of occasion. I love this. Oh, I have one. You have this? <laughs> yeah, Why didn't you wear this today? <laughs> We're just standing here because the air conditions are. Yeah, it's sweaty. It's sweaty. Oh my God. How do you do it here? So every day is this humid? Yes, every day. I looked up where the name Kuala Lumpur came from, and did you know? Well, you speak Malay. Apparently, it means where two like where muddy rivers yeah. align. Yeah, Lumpur is my yeah. I wanted to come and see where it all began, where the two rivers. I don't know if it was actually here, but it is a Kuala Lumpur it though. It is a Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> that is a Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> Right? So word on the street is that y'all got a lot of drag queens that are getting yeah, <laughs> that are maybe. getting detained. Yeah. But what's interesting is that there's a gay bar here and they have a 
drag show performance every Friday and Saturday. I was yeah. about to go. I didn't, yeah, I didn't make you it did, there. You didn't make it. Mm -hmm. I didn't make it there. I couldn't do my performance. <laughs> it's not even that bad. Everyone feels safe at the event as a drag queen. Right. And I feel safer there and rather than going like a normal street bar. Exactly. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I feel more safe with the gate. So I'm here at Chin Sui Caves Temple. Here I was thinking that I was visiting something hundreds of years old, having this really like unique moment. This was built in 1994. I'm technically older than this thing. It was officially open on March 29, 1994. I've been so fascinated, as you can see in the last few videos, coming to these countries where religion is super prominent. And especially here in Malaysia, like I already mentioned, I think that when you're walking around, like signage is in multiple languages. So I've noticed when walking around that there's signage in four languages. You have Tamil, Arabic, Chinese, and English. Not only that, but people practice different religions in this one place. Not only is there the call to prayer every day. See, this is what's interesting. We got the call to prayer. That's Islam. But then you have Hindu temples. I think that was a Taoist temple. So when we walked in, somebody was burning this. Yeah. And you're saying that you think that it's... So basically, it's for a blessing. You're saying that yeah. people tend to mm. burn things so that they'll appear in the next life? For not the next life, but for the afterlife, for their loved ones who have passed away or for their ancestors. This is a statue of the Buddha, and as I'm here, I'm like, um, we gonna talk about the fact that there's a swastika on the chest? Okay, but that was just me actually being uneducated because I didn't know. I just filmed a TikTok about this, but it took me coming to Malaysia where there is a swastika on the statue's chest to realize that the swastika didn't originate with the Nazis. The swastika is a symbol that represents good fortune and abundance that Hindu and Buddhist cultures have been using forever. Swastika is a Sanskrit word, which means all is well. While the symbol is largely associated with the Holocaust in the West today, the swastika as a symbol of good fortune dates back millennia. The, oh my god, the symbol has why did the Nazis take the swastika for Buddhism? Like, were they just trying to piss off every religion? Cause, um... They appropriated the swastika and distorted its meaning to suit their own ideological agenda. They sure did. In Hinduism, the swastika, known as svastika in Sanskrit, is a sacred symbol representing prosperity, good fortune, and well-being. You see what travel can do, everybody. I wasn't even planning to learn about Nazi Germany, and here I am in Malaysia doing so. The place that most people tell you to go is Batu Caves. But you see, I was eating at this Japanese restaurant, a vegan Japanese restaurant called Kusa. I walked in and I found another snack. The sound was coming from here. So as I was saying, um, I thought I was just having dinner, but I found another snack at the entrance, this dude from Afghanistan. And so then he came to my table. <laughs> And I was like, oh, where are you from? Are you from Kuala Lumpur? So I asked, you know, I was just trying to find ways to make conversation. And he was like, oh, well, why don't you go to Genting Highlands? So guess where we are? <laughs> um, clay pot stewed tofu. Tofu, yes. Does it come with rice? Perfect. Okay. Oh, it doesn't come with rice. Oh, yes, it doesn't. Thank you. No, does it with rice or no rice? Oh, you put it on that? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's far. It's far from me. Yeah. It's the way there's barely anybody here. Another one. I need a candle that lasts this long too. <laughs> it's gonna go on all month. I'm about ready for the outlet mall, but 
I had this thought. It's really interesting how religion can bring people closer to like deeper thought and then for some people it can take them away from it. Like they just put all their belief in like this ultimate savior and they don't really think or they don't really develop their own thoughts. Um, okay, well we can tell that I haven't done any exercise because I've gone about five steps. <laughs> I mean imagine you were just like you were born on a deserted island and no one was there. You'd have to come up with your own your own everything. You want to go to Gunting Highlands, right? I heard there's like a chairlift, like a cable car. Oh yeah, there's a cable car up there. Well guys, this episode of the Sisterhood of the Traveling Linen Pants is now complete. I wanted to end it here in a mall, and what better place en plus than an outlet mall. <laughs> not this girl saying she's been to Ginting, but not for the temple, just for the outlet mall. For the outlet the mall, like... <laughs> this is always how it is. I'm trying to like go see like the temples and the, the get to the bottom of the culture, and you guys are just in the malls. Malaysia. 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 Malaysia, home to the famous historical mall dynasty. Like if you thought Dubai was all malls, <laughs> Just wait till you come to Southeast Asia. Um, I forgot to mention, I did go to Singapore before this. Continuing on with my worldwide tour of cities that put American cities to shame, here we are in Singapore, which is giving walkable and tropical Dubai. Everything, like everything's connected by gateway. Like this is what I'm talking about. I don't think I've ever been to a city with better infrastructure. Like everywhere is clean. Everywhere you look has been kind of developed. Um, there's a pathway to everything. You see what I'm saying? Now it's like, where does this, where does this path go? And there's gonna be a whole, another mall over here. Il y a des petits coins partout. Like, I'm thinking in terms of a date spots. There's all these little corners to sit. Now guys, I actually didn't come here for durians. No, I came here because I've been obsessed trying to find this commercial from my childhood where <laughs> there's like a parent who walks in the room to this kid playing with Legos and they go, actually, it's a scale model of the Patronus Towers in Kuala Lumpur. It's the world's tallest building. I've been looking for this fucking commercial for years, so much so that I found my own tweet from 2012. So since that commercial, I've wanted to come to Kuala Lumpur to see the Patronus Tower. Well guys, we're ending this one here. I have done all the climate. Oh, sorry, not just this video. We're ending the season. Sorry, did I mention that? Was that, was that clear? I am done with YouTube for um, a hot minute. I'm a ghost, y'all. I'm gonna disappear for a little bit because I haven't stopped uh, since the book tour, which was January 17th. Let's just recap everywhere I've been. New York, Boston, back to New York, to Miami, LA, London, Paris, London, uh, Arctic Circle, Paris, London, Clark Park, Gilgogar, 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 the entire country of Ireland, back to Paris, down to the Alps, over to Milan, over to San Pellegrino, over to Dubai, over to Bali, over to Singapore, over to Kuala Lumpur's outlet mall. <laughs> After this, I'm going to Tokyo. <laughs> I'm taking a break from YouTube because I want to build out, I want to roll out all these services I've been talking about in my past few videos. I had an amazing time filming all these videos. I hope you guys like them. I feel like I upped my game. And now it's time to keep up my game by going, taking some time off to go do the other things. I know y'all are on my side. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you when I see you. Probably on a newsletter or Instagram or I don't know. Hi. There's really just a floating red ball that goes up and down in our sky and we just go about our day. <laughs> I'm reminded of my childhood when my mom would always say, Damon, it's not a fashion show. But like it is though, it, it, like life is a fashion, no? Like why would it not be? For us to think it's not a fashion show is the mistake. Are you kidding? I got one life here on earth and I'm not gonna like look the flyest I can look or do the coolest things. Are you kidding? This is a video game, everybody. What do you want your character to look like? When you find out, please let me know because I hate my outfit. <laughs> There's a guy who came to my book event in Boston and he was like, I like what you say about travel, how you don't just have to um, automatically absorb your culture's qualities. It's up to you to choose them. He was like, I like that way of thinking, but for me, it's more the generation. So he was dressed in 80s and his whole thing was that he liked the 80s. And he was like, yeah, I can choose, I can choose what decade I'm from too. Yes! Correct! And I'll see you suckers next time. Bye.